So Rebecca, how often do you see parental alienation in your practice? More than I like to see it. And I think it comes from the intense anger and hurt and pain that one or other of the parents are feeling. Because, say for instance, um, either the mother or the father had an affair and they've already stepped outside of that commitment. Marriage is an emotional commitment and also a legal contract, but an emotional commitment. And so when one partner sabotages that and steps outside, then the one that is left is you know, burdened with the pain and the sorrow and the, oh no, what's gonna happen to me? So if that's not dealt with in counseling, if that's not, um, yeah, essentially dealt with in a therapeutic setting where they can feel validated but then work through that anger, then of course they're gonna sabotage any connection that, that other, the other parent may try to have with that child. They will um, talk badly about the other parent or they'll say, you know, your dad really doesn't want to spend time with you. You know, he's just doing that because he doesn't want to pay child support, you know, or just really hurtful statements to demean the other parent. Um, and so that will alienate the child because who's the child going to listen to? The one that he or she is with the most and hear those kind of destructive comments about the other parent and then the one that you know does say well I want my visitation you know I want to have a relationship with my child how do I work through this how do I get through to the other parent that I do love it it doesn't mean that I've fallen out of love with my child it means I've fallen out of love with you but let's put the child first so the parent that's left with all the pain and the sorrow definitely needs counseling to work through all of that energy and a lot of it negative energy so that they can put the child first so i hope that answered your question yeah but what about the child i mean what do we do for them in these cases uh, i do a lot of play therapy with younger children but adolescents you know we talk about what it is that they are feeling themselves the feeling split, the feeling, you know, disconnected. I mean, they're very honest and open when they have, when I've developed rapport and trust with them, of course, I mean, which right. doesn't happen immediately. Um, but they start talking about what it's like to be in a divorced family. Because for them, that just, that's throwing the world up. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. They had this beautiful picture of what family was. And the parents have thrown it up in the air and it crashes on the floor. And there's all this multitude of pieces that what do they do with that? You know, how do they reconstruct? And a lot of it's out of their hands. It's in the parents' hands. Now, what are we going to, how is this going to look? We're going to reconstruct family, but it has to look different. But if it can be done with, in a sense of, you know, peaceful, you know, collaboration and consideration, right. then that's the best for everyone, not just the children. So Rebecca, how do people contact you? Um, I have a actually a remote office management system that they can contact at 910-987-6491. My practice is Tools for Life. Um, I do have a web page. It's toolsforlifellc.com. Uh, I have a bio there, so I really encourage people, before they schedule with me, check out my webpage. Uh, read about my philosophy of life and what I have to offer, you know, before you make that decision. In my private practice, I uh, accept a wide range of insurance, um, private pay, I teach classes and I lead groups. Have you experienced someone with narcissistic traits in your life? If so, let us know in the comments. Like, subscribe, and share to maybe help someone who's going through this in their life.